we are going to be making butter today. We're gonna to do unsalted homemade butter and we only need one ingredient. All we need is our heavy cream and that's gonna make our base for our unsalted butter. Now, of course, we can take it up so many notches. We can add salt, we can add herbs like thyme and rosemary. We can do so many things with our butter once we get this base recipe established. So let's go ahead and jump into the very simple recipe for this homemade keto butter. You guys are gonna wonder why you haven't been making it at home all this time. Okay, super simple. Let's get into it step by step. A lot of recipes, base recipes for infusions and butter herb compotes and things will call for probably about a pint. So, well, let's, let's try with a pint. Let's see how much we yield of butter from one pint of heavy cream. So I'm gonna add 16. Let's see this. We've got 11.1, 1, 1, 1 is what we actually have. So we're just gonna go with that. Doesn't have to be a perfect science. And I know I've been promising for a million years, you guys, but I am going to set up my arrow garden. I have one in the back. I'm gonna set this one up probably with tomatoes and lettuce and have the little tomatoes here with the heirloom kit. And then I did go ahead and get some planters. I got one that is for tomatoes also, and then one that is chili peppers. So I'm gonna take these out and do a little unboxing for you guys. I'm sure I'll do that in a separate video from this. And the lettuce pods are downstairs. I'm gonna run down and get those in a bit. But for now, we are gonna focus on the butter. Super simple again, beginner friendly. So what we're gonna do to get started after we have our cream in our bowl, you just take a hand mixer. We don't need the scale anymore. Just trying to get an idea of how much we had. I was hoping to hit 16 ounces. We're gonna make as much as we have. It's a very forgiving recipe. It's not like baking where you need to be so super precise with the measurements. All we're really trying to do is to whip up the butter, thicken and create butter. So if you're, you've ever made whipped cream, it's a similar process, but we're just gonna go a step further. So with the whipped cream, we would be doing the same exact process, just starting on low to medium, and then slowly increasing the speed as the cream thickens. But we would stop sooner when it's just like stiff peaks. Like if you can pick up, whoop, if you can pick up the hand mixer. See, we pretty much have whipped cream there. We could just take it a little further if you wanted it thicker, but that's pretty much where we would stop for whipped cream. And that only took about three minutes. That was pretty fast. But for butter, we're gonna wanna keep going because we want to break the cream. We're, we're not gonna have this silky mix of cream. And actually this would be great for a cake frosting. You could stop right here, add sweetener, vanilla. But we're gonna wanna keep going further to make butter until the milk solids, the fat, the pure fat, separates from the milk the actual fluid milk. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna save that milk. We're not gonna waste that at all. That is buttermilk. So we can use that buttermilk in other recipes. We can use it in pancakes. We can use it when we're frying as a part of our dredging process. There's a lot of things we can do. We wanna try to use everything, all the ingredients that we have and not waste everything because pretty much every type of food has more than one purpose. So you see, you can see it's starting to get a little milly, a little grainy not as creamy as it was anymore at this point. The fat solid is starting to separate and pull away from the buttermilk. And before long now, we are gonna see the buttermilk start to release in this bowl here. Just keep watching, I see it starting to happen right now. See that? See that liquid starting to form in the bowl now? And then you see these little granules, these little granules of what is starting to already look like butter. Okay, this is what we want. We want to get that separation, see? Woo! We want to also turn this down. <laughs> we want to also turn this down a bit because I'm making a mess. I think I saw somewhere where somebody did suggest having like some kind of cover around the bowl. Maybe you can do that with plastic wrap or something to prevent some of the splattering. 
but it's no biggie cooking gets messy i don't mind getting messy in the kitchen when i'm cooking it's a part of the charm so look at this guys you see look at that the buttermilk has completely released from that fat in the cream so now we have buttermilk and we have the beginnings of amazing unsalted homemade butter look at this guys look at this was that hard at all was that hard at all right so what i'm gonna do again we don't waste anything i'm gonna show you because i think i still have some set up in the freezer in my trays i'm gonna show you how i am going to save my buttermilk because i don't have plans right now to make a recipe that needs them where i could just put it in the refrigerator for like 10 days 14 days or so it'll probably stay good what i'm going to do is go ahead and pour this buttermilk into ice trays and freeze it and that way i'll have it in a labeled bag the same way that i do when i make ghee i'm going to separate those milk solids out and i can use those separately in dishes and i do it in ice cubes so that they're just portioned out nicely and so i can just grab them and use them quickly whenever i need them it looks like I have water in my ice trays again at this point. But essentially, this is how it will be. You see, just pour the buttermilk into the ice trays and then pop them into a food saver or food sealer bag and label it. And then you can have buttermilk on hand whenever you need it. It's never going to go bad pretty much in the freezer. And again, I do the same thing with my milk solids when I make ghee. Try to use everything, guys. So what I'm going to do now that I've got the milk fat solid and the buttermilk separated out in the bowl is I'm going to take a very fine mesh strainer and a measuring cup to make it easier to pour. Could probably use a spoon or something here, right? Just end of the whisk is fine, I think. We improvise in the kitchen, right? And there will also be more buttermilk that we'll be able to get out of this initial butter. Look at that. Look at that, guys. It's crazy, right? Look how, look at that. Look at that. Amazing, see? Some of the milk will continue to pool. That's all right. We're just gonna pour out as much as we can right now. And then we are going to pop the fat solids, the butter, into this fine mesh strainer and then squeeze out the remainder of the buttermilk that we can. Then we're going to go ahead and shock our butter with some ice cold water and that will further release the buttermilk that's within the fat solids. And then we can do whatever we want at that point. We've got perfect homemade unsalted butter and we can leave it just like that which is what I did in my container for now. I wanna have a universal butter so that I can make a really large batch, keep that in the fridge for pretty much almost indefinitely. And then I can just work with that, whether it's a sweet recipe, savory recipe, whatever I'm doing, I can even take it from here and work it into making a homemade ghee. So there are so many options with this. I'm excited to try a lot of recipes with this and I hope you guys are gonna try along with me. So again, the goal is to waste nothing if we can. Use what we have, right? So we're gonna go ahead. Some of that milk is still draining off. We just pop that right there for now. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the buttermilk into the ice trays, pop this in the freezer for about an hour. And then I'll pop them out and put them in another food sealer bag and label and date them and then they're always there on hand anytime i need buttermilk see easy peasy we can do something similar to this with butters and infusions with herbs or oils and infusions with herbs or what's called like herb bombs where it's just mainly the ground up fresh herbs and water you can do that or with broth whatever you want and then you can have these pods on hand in a pinch whenever you need them to just throw into a soup or a stew or whatever you're making. It's really great for an added flavor and infusion with minimal effort.
so here we are guys i drained a little bit more of the buttermilk out there's still a little bit in the bottom of the bowl that's okay i'm gonna end up pouring that off and here we go look at our butter guys you tell me if that's not as good or if not better as any store bought butter that you could get your hands on you can use this exactly how you'd use butter in baking or just whatever, sauces, whatever you want, it's real butter. So what we're gonna do now that we have our butter, it's pretty much well formed. We're just gonna shock it in the cold water. You can see it's gonna get a little gray. There is still some buttermilk within those fat solids. And this process helps us get as much of it out as we can before we do our final press and we can go ahead and put the butter in a jar like I have mine or you can go ahead and roll it into a log at this point after we take it out and just get as much moisture out as we can you could go ahead at that point and add some salt to your butter you could add diced up fresh herbs or dried herbs to your butter you could add sweets you know your favorite sweetener nutmeg cinnamon whatever you want at that point to your butter once butter is in your fridge, it's good for quite some time. You can also go ahead and freeze the butter as I did the buttermilk, longer shelf life. And again, you can use this butter base to go ahead and make a really cost effective ghee right at home. I did make a video a few years back making ghee the way that I saw it being made in the videos that I'd watched and things that I'd observed. And a lot of you guys did leave feedback saying that that was not the way that you guys traditionally have seen it done or did it. And I very much like to get into the cultural way that things are done. I want, you know, they're done the way that they're done for a reason for maximum results. So I want to go back in and maybe do another ghee video if you guys are game for that. And this time I really do make sure that I get that browning, that first level of browning and then go back in a second time so it's a really nutty, caramely ghee that you end up with that's fantastic and another way to save a lot of money because ghee in the store, you know, you might get eight ounces for about $10 and you can make the same amount at home for probably about a third of that. So if you guys are interested in revisiting the ghee video and making some more videos with butter, uh, doing butter infusions, herb infusions, and flavor infusions, go ahead and note that in the comments below, and I will get on that for you guys. And also, make sure you check in the description box below, because I did come across a couple of really helpful books that are free on Kindle. I don't know if you have to be an Amazon Prime member, I am, but that I'm not sure if that's why, but um, I'll leave the links to the books in the description box below, because they offer so many really tasty butter infusion, oil infusion, jam recipes, all kinds of stuff that's free to read on Kindle. So you can check in the description box for that, along with any products that I've used in the video because I will link that in the description box below as well. And of course, anything that you get using those links, if you were gonna get them anyway, it really does help the channel so I can try new products, buy new products, and bring things to you guys to share whether it's worth your time and your money or not. Okay, so we're gonna wanna take our chilled butter here. And again, it's pretty much come together as one unit, it's solid. And I'm gonna get this transferred. I'm gonna be using that fine mesh again. And I also wanna just drop it in the bowl with it teared out to zero on the scale just to see how much we got. Okay, 140 grams. I'm just gonna see if I can get any more moisture. Look at that, see there's still moisture in there. We want just pure solid fat as much as possible. Okay. And I can go ahead and just add that to the rest of the buttermilk in the freezer. Uh, I still have my butter that I made just, just now in the mesh bag. And of course you could use cheesecloth for that as well. But um, this is what I ended up with from yesterday's butter batch. And this is what you will end up with 
once you've let your butter set up in the refrigerator for a little bit. Well, let me just grab a knife so you can see what this looks like. Okay. It's just coming out of the refrigerator, so it's not quite smooth right now, but if you let it sit on the countertop for a few minutes, it will be. But it's perfect. I mean, it's legit butter. Look at that. It's perfect. And again, I'm going to leave this big amount, you know, I'm going to fill this all the way up. I'm going to keep going until I get this completely filled. And this unsalted butter will just be my base that I can make so many things from. I can go ahead and pull some from it. If I want to make a salted butter, an herb infused butter, a sweet butter for a baked recipe, anything that I want. But this is a great base, unsalted, and this can just stay stored in the fridge. I don't have to use the airtight seal, but I just think it looks cute like that. Yeah, I'm going to store it in my wet jar in the fridge and this will be great for a while a while a while to come so I waited a while and came back I want you guys to see the texture of it and it's like at room temperature this is what you get look at that mm -hmm. it's delicious And I also experimented the other day, you guys, with the Keto Connect bread. I made that and then just cut off the edges, the crust, and cut these into breadcrumbs. Oh my gosh. If you guys are interested in me telling you how to make them, this is how they came out. They are so delicious on salads, whatever you want, wherever you put breadcrumbs, these are the joint. And I did, I added a little bit of sea salt. I added some flavor god, uh, the garlic lovers, and it is just on the money. And then of course, see the crumbs at the bottom? There you go, you got breadcrumbs. So this is a great recipe to make, but I'm just going to toast a little bit, a little piece of this up, just so you can see how the butter spreads. This one came out, it didn't really rise that high because I used a really large pan to bake, but it'll usually rise to about three quarters the height of a regular bread loaf. But these were cute and I ended up just using it instead, like I said, to make the breadcrumbs. So you can find a way to use pretty much anything, right? So you can go ahead and just toast up a little piece of your bread and get some of your homemade butter. You're gonna feel like a champion making homemade butter. Your kids are gonna think you're even more of a hero. Look at that. Oh, that's a keto pat of butter. Look at this, look at me. Look at that, look at that. Delicious guys, there you have it. One ingredient, keto butter, super easy. When would butter not be keto, right guys? But a really easy beginner friendly butter recipe. You guys can make butter at home at any time and probably save a ton of money to boot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Share it with somebody that you think will enjoy it as well. I hope you guys love it. Share in the comments if you make it. And of course, guys, as always, until the next time, stay safe and be well, Diva family. I'm gonna go enjoy this. Bye-bye.